So my question to you, my question to you is, is God some kind of like sick manipulator that he puts these desires in our hearts, that he creates us for love and then sets us up for mission impossible? Is that our God? Is that the God that we believe in? Because you know what, if that's the God I believe in, I want nothing to do with him. I want nothing to do with him. Sign me, like, take away the priesthood and I'll just live my own, like, pagan existence. In John chapter 10, 10, John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus proclaims powerfully, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. But the verse before that is very, very important for you and I tonight. Because before he speaks about the abundant life that he wants to give you and I, he talks about the thief. And he says that the thief is one who comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The thief comes to kill, steal, kill, and destroy. Who is he speaking about? He is speaking about the forces of evil of Satan and his fallen angels. We forget the story that when God gave the angels the decision to choose him or not, to choose to love him or not, that Lucifer, the greatest of all of the angels, said, I will not serve. And the scriptures say that one third of heaven fell. So Lucifer and a third of the angels were lost for all eternity because they would reject and rebel God's plan. They had the choice. When an angel, because their intelligence, their spiritual being, their intelligence is, is far beyond anything that we could begin to comprehend. When an angel makes a decision, it's a forever decision. They live in eternity. It's a forever decision. In the angels, every angel was given that opportunity at one point in eternity to choose or not. And that decision had an eternal consequence, and they knew it. Jesus does not mix words when he speaks about evil in the scriptures. Let me say that again. Jesus does not mix words when he speaks about evil in the scriptures. He performs exorcisms. He speaks about the evil one. He speaks about hell and Gehenna. It is a reality, my brothers and sisters. And this evil, which is at work in the world, as well as God's grace, and God's grace is greater, it is a reality. So if this evil force wants to steal, kill, and destroy, the evil force wants to steal your faith, kill your soul, destroy your life now and for all eternity. That is a reality. That is a reality that is Catholic Church teaching. Not Father Matt. Not Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, or Casper the Friendly Ghost. It is real. It is real. It is real. But then comes the good news. The good news that after saying that the thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy, Jesus says, but I come so that they might have life and have it abundantly. Abundantly. That God does not stay far off in a distance watching us suffer in our love, in our broken love, in our unlove, and all that kind of stuff, but that God gets into our messiness. He jumps in and rolls up his sleeves. He was not born in a palace. He was born in a cave, in a manger with smelly animals. He was rejected by his very own and crucified as a condemned criminal outside of the walls of Jerusalem. But I tell you, my brothers and sisters, that abundant life that he wants to give came at a great price. It came at his price of his precious blood on the cross because on that day, he said that when the Son of Man is handed over, he will draw all men, all women unto himself. On that Good Friday afternoon, when Jesus hung on the wood of the tree, on the cross, you were in his heart. You were in his mind. He drew you to, your, to himself. What put him on the cross? My sin. My sin put him on the cross. My unlove. The times when I chose the easy way out rather than stick it out into love as Christ loves. He took that sin, that unlove, 
unto the cross and nailed it and redeemed it. Every one of us that has been victimized or experienced unlove or brokenness in our lives, whatever point, or if you haven't praised the Lord God, but every time we've experienced unlove or have been a source of unlove, on the cross, Jesus took it unto himself. He drew it unto himself and he redeemed it. And he defeated sin and death forever. He is the victorious one. The good news is the abundant life he wants to give you is his victory. Do you want it? Do you want his victory? Because he wants to give it to you. The abundant life he promises is his divine grace, his very life flowing through your bones that can restore you in an instant. Can restore you in an instant. It doesn't matter where you've been. What matters is right now and where you're going. He can restore your life. He can forgive your sins. He can give you back your life. He can put love back into your soul. He can lift you up and you can love with his love. The church, the Catholic church, our great Catholic church, has been beaten tremendously over these past 10 years. Beaten tremendously for our own sins, and we deserve a lot of it. I'm not saying we don't. But you know what? The reality is, the reality is that Christ founded one church. He founded one church, and he said that the gates of hell will never prevail against that one church. He said that the gates of hell would never prevail against his church. And in that church, he gives us sacraments. And you know what sacraments are? Sacraments are a gift from heaven. A gift from heaven. You can go and receive a sacrament like reconciliation and get divine life forgiveness and get your life completely restored. You can go to Holy Mass and receive the body and blood of Jesus. Have divine life flow through you. So then we don't have to cave in to all of the unlove of the world. But we have divine life. We have God's life. God's love flowing through us. We can love like Jesus. We can love like Jesus. You have trouble in your marriage. You call upon him. You can love with him, with his love. You struggle in your family relationships. You call upon his divine love so you can love with his love. It's all about Jesus. I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. It's, he wants to pour himself into you so that you can love and live in that love. But always the choice is ours. I'm out of breath, I'm sorry. They turn up the heat in here. Kids, this guy's long-winded. But this is the truth of the gospel. This is the invitation that Jesus has for you and me tonight. Tonight, now, the sacrament of reconciliation is offered. And like you're given an opportunity to start over. To bring the hurt of the unloved, whether it's the unloved that you offered, or the things that have happened to you, to bring that to Christ in the, in the sacrament of reconciliation and be forgiven and restored. He wants to restore us. He wants to love us. And in the Eucharist tonight, when Jesus comes out with the, when our priest comes out with the Holy Eucharist, like you gaze upon him face to face and he wants to speak to your soul. He wants to restore your life. He wants us to come to with expectance tonight, faith tonight, brothers and sisters. So I say it again. You were created for great things. You were created for love. You were created for God's love. And tonight, brothers and sisters, is a night to be renewed in that abundant love so that we may let it overflow of our, out of our lives and share it to a broken, weary world that is looking for the love that you are going to experience right now.